So uh, in chapter two, we're going to discuss functions, and in section 2.1, uh, we are introduced to functions. You may have dealt with functions before. Uh, basically, you know, in a nutshell, functions are are just equations. Uh, they fall into the class of functions based upon uh, the equation to where when you put a number in for x, you get only one answer for y. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that happens all the time. Well, pretty much most of the time it does. Uh, there are certain types of equations that do not fall into that, uh, I guess, rule or follow that rule or fall into that category. So we're dealing with functions and anything in, in from this uh, chapter on out, you're going to see the notation that I will show you here shortly. But that just means that it has that stipulation. So basically a function is a relation. And when you, for each input value, there is exactly one output value. Again, for each x, there is one y. And so when you put a number in, if x is 2, y is 5. And you can't say x is 2, y is 5, and y is 6. Doesn't work that way. So that would not be a function. We can express functions in many different ways, uh, including as a set of ordered pairs, as an equation, or as a graph. Now, if a function is written as a set of ordered pairs, then that's how we can determine if those ordered pairs constitute a function. We just cannot repeat x values unless it's exactly the same x value. Okay, And so here's a couple key terms here. Your domain and range. The domain is the input, which is the x values, and the range, which we uh, are the output values, which are the y values. So, you know, you can have domain as like a finite set of points. It can be a range on a graph. Whoop, I shouldn't say range. It can be a small to high on a graph. Um, or it can be from an equation. Um, so what we'll be talking about uh, in this section are domain and range from finite set of points and from a graph. We will get to the equations at another time. The range are your y values and you can also do the same thing with y values but you, in, in y values they go low to high which I'll demonstrate later. Alright so in example one we want to determine if this relationship here is a function. If it is a function we're going to give its domain and range. And so we look through here and first of all, I have four distinct x's, so yes, it is a function. And my domain, and I'm just going to use the set notation and abbreviate D for domain, is the 2, the 1, the 0, and the negative 1. Now, proper mathematics would be to list the smaller number first. Okay, but I'm not always proper. Uh, I try to be. But, you know, when it comes in order, I'm going to go left to right, and most people do the same. Now, my corresponding range values, negative 3, negative 5, and negative 7. Uh, I have a negative 3, but I've already got that element, so I'm not going to list it twice. Okay, um, and y values can be repeated. It's just x values cannot be repeated to be a function. So that's what you're looking for when, you, when you're looking at finite sets of points. Now for this here, we look through and we have negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and then negative 3 again. So I can stop right here. This is not a function. Okay, because I repeated x's with different y's. So that's how you can determine if something's a function or not from a finite set of points. You can also look at a graph to see if it represents a function by the vertical line test. Uh-oh, don't be messing your camera up. So the vertical line test, um, what we can do with that is we can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and if it intersects it more than once, then it's not a function because that indicates you've repeated x values. 
Okay, so if I look at this first one, I know you can hardly see that one, but it's a parabola. It's a U. I will draw a little bit better here. Okay, but this is a function because I can draw as many vertical lines as possible, and I'm only going to intersect it once. Same thing with part B. This is also a graph of a function. But C, it is not because I can draw a vertical line right there, and I intersect it twice. So A is yes, it's a function. B is yes, it's a function. And C is no. So again, you know, I'm going to repeat that a function is just an equation with the stipulation that for each x value substituted in the function, there's exactly one y value for the answer. And when we talk about equations, you know, if my function, you know, f of x is x plus 3, and again, this means y. This is just like it used to be when we would say y equals x plus 3. Means that if x is 1, then f of 1 is 1 plus 3, which is 4. And there's only one answer. So therefore, it's a function. 4 is what we get when x is 1. And what we can say is x is 1 and y is 4. So again, this is just a notation, but technically it means y equals. Okay? So you can read through that, same as the y value. When we use a notation, f of x or g of x or h of x or whatever letter, we're just claiming that the equation is a function because not all equations are functions. So just remember, the number inside the parentheses is the x value. Okay. So f of 3, x is 3, g of negative 5, x is negative 5, etc. So we can evaluate functions. And basically what we're doing is we are substituting x in, simplifying, and getting y. So f of negative 2 would be 3 times negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 5. Okay, so this is a good time to practice doing some of these items on your calculator. Um, that way... As we go, you may not make as many sign mistakes. Okay, so, you know, if you are typing this into your calculator, you can type it in exactly as I've written it. And then just hit equals or enter, depending on the calculator you have. And so, because you got to be careful with these signs here. When you're doing negatives, make sure if you're squaring a negative, you put the square on the outside and put the negative inside parentheses. So you should get the answer of 5 here. If not, redo it. Pause and redo it. Make sure and see what's going on. F of 0 is going to be just 5. And so keep in mind, you know, these are ordered pairs. These are points. Like this is the point zero five. This is also called a y-intercept, um, which we'll be talking about here shortly. But, you know, these are points on a graph. F of 4 So if I work this out, put it in my calculator, 48 plus 4 is 52, minus 5 is 47. So, you know, just be careful. And again, x, y, x, y. So those are numerical values we can evaluate in a function. We can also do, you know, x's and, x and expressions into the function as well. So if I wanted to do f of negative x, well, again, I just replace all x's with negative x and then simplify. So if I square negative x, it just stays positive. 3 times negative x is negative 3x and then minus 1. 
So, you know, you can get expressions. We obviously cannot plot these on a graph, but you can still get an input and an output. I'm not solving. I'm not factoring. I'm stopping right there. I am substituting and simplifying. So don't go any further because you're going to add more time to your workload. Now, with an expression like this, you know, this can be a little difficult here because, you know, I am squaring x plus 2, then I am taking 3 times the x plus 2, then subtracting the 1. So what you have to remember is when you square something, you multiply it by itself. So you're going to use your FOIL method and then make sure you multiply that result by 2. Okay, so, you know, if I am working this out, I'm going to do my FOIL method, x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and multi distribute there. And there are, you know, shortcuts you can take here. So now I'm going to distribute that too. Okay, and then I'm going to combine my like terms. I've got some x's, I've got some numbers. So I have 2x squared, I have 8 plus 3 is 11x. I have 8 plus 6 minus 1 would be 13. And I stop there, I am finished with that particular equation function. Okay, so, you know, these are some of the things that you will be asked to do. Um, evaluating functions given numbers or given algebraic expressions. The last bit of information is uh, getting values from graphs, okay? You know, sometimes some people just really don't like graphing uh, for whatever reason. Uh, is it, you know, because of the way it looks? Is it not understanding how they're made? Whatever. But it's it just is. So you can see it for a graph. We have the domain, which is my lowest x to my highest x. And this is your x-axis here. This is your y-axis. So if I'm looking at the domain, well, the smallest x I have is negative 1. And, you know, this graph is continuous. So it's going all the way from negative 1 up to 5. We don't worry about up and down for domain. We're just looking left and right. Is there something above or below left and right? And there is, all the way from negative 1 to 5. Okay. Now, the hollow circle means that the 5 is technically not included. So if I was doing my domain here, I would say it goes from negative 1 to 5. And this is where I talked about uh, in class about the use of interval notation um, to give answers. So, so my domain is smallest x to largest x. We have a shaded point here, a hollow point there. So, you know, you have to indicate that. Now my range... If I look at my range, I go low to high. So there is my lowest y, which is negative 3. And then I go up and see where is my highest y. It just happens to be on the y-axis, which is positive 3. So my range, and both of those are shaded, would go negative 3 to positive 3. Now when we're finding function values from graphs, you know, Right here, x is 2, y is negative 3. So I can say that f of 2 is negative 3. And, you know, when you're finding function values,
remember that this is x. So if I want to know where x is, x is negative 1, well, here's where x is negative 1. Then I go up or down to locate the graph, and it's right there. So f of negative 1 is 1. The graph can't be above and below, or it wouldn't be a function. It's a vertical line test. So you're only going to have one answer. So you have to go to the x you're looking for on the axis, and then go above or below to locate the graph itself, and then find the point. Now, if I wanted to know where f of x is 3, well, this is y. Okay? So y is 3. So I go up and down the y axis to 3, and then x is 0. So f of 0 is 3. Okay? Now, here's an example here um, of just a random graph. Okay, and remember, the graph is the picture that's drawn. The x and y axis, that's not the graph. That's the coordinate plane. Um, you know, sometimes the, the word meanings, the, the way we say things can confuse us. But the graph is the picture that's drawn on the coordinate plane. So we want to provide the following information. First, we want to find f of 0. So 0 is my x right in the middle. The graph is above, so f of 0 is 3. Next, f of negative 4. So I scroll along. Here's negative 4. Again, the graph is up here, so it is 2. Lastly, f of 2, again, x is 2, so x is 2, y is 0. Now, if you're not given the points, like here we were actually given all of our points, you just, I mean they're still not there. I mean there's points for every number along this x-axis from negative 4 to 4 because the graph is continuous the whole way. And so that tells us kind of what our domain is. So my domain is negative 4 to positive 4. And it includes both of those, so I'll use brackets. Now, don't list your domain as these x's that are plotted. It's, it's all the values for x, so we have encompassed everything all the way negative 4 to 4. Now, if there were arrows on the ends of these uh, graph here, that means that it would go on, so it would be negative infinity to positive infinity, but for what we're doing here, the graphs do have a starting and an ending point. And the range, low to high. So my lowest y value is 0, my highest y value is 3. So my range is 0 to 3. Intercepts. Okay, we haven't really talked about these yet. I mean, sometimes the assumptions made that, oh, you'll, you'll remember what intercepts are. Well, I know better. Um, I don't assume anything like that. So, intercepts, like x intercepts, are where the graph touches or crosses the x axis. So, in this case, my x intercepts are negative 2, 0, and positive 2, 0. X intercepts always have a Y coordinate of 0. So my X intercepts are negative 2, 0, positive 2, 0. And your Y intercept is where the graph touches or crosses the Y axis. So right here, see my graph crosses over the Y axis. And so it is 0, 3. So intercepts have to have a 0. One of the two coordinates must be a zero.
So here's a good one here that, you know, um, that can kind of trip you up if you're not careful. Because sometimes we tend to only look at points that are plotted. So I put this in here just to let you know to look for more than that. So the last one here, for what values of x does f of x equal 2? So what we're saying here is y equals 2, find x. Well, y is 2 for sure here and here. But you also have right here and right here, points that aren't necessarily plotted, but still, you know, are I have a y value of 2. Um, and, and you may say, well, what is it? I, ha I mean, just estimate the best you can. So I'm going to say x is negative 4. You know, maybe, I don't know, negative 0.9, positive 0.9, and positive 4. So there's four x values where y is 2. And if you said negative 1 and positive 1, that's fine. I'm not going to get too picky about that because you are estimating. Okay, so again, y is 2 all the way across here. So we've got this point, this point, this point, and that point. Okay. All right, so that's it. Um, hopefully we'll do more in class. And if you have any questions, maybe it'll get cleared up in class.